I think we're all here. Uh, we have three guest speakers tonight. This is an interesting format for the Live of Five. You guys obviously know usually we do these uh, as video on YouTube. Um, so this will be an interesting change, especially because we'll be able to do the AMA uh, actually live, you know, actually talking to each other, which is, which is awesome. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the first Live at Five of 2022. Uh, there's no music or anything, so I guess we just jump right in. Um, so first of all, obviously, we always kick off with a crypto market update. Uh, oh, and by the way, you can always join the fun of the Live at Five with the hashtag, hashtag Live at Five. Um, so yeah, crypto market update. Interesting market conditions right now. Uh, obviously, everything is decimated and that is okay. I think OGs in the space are pretty level-headed right now. I'm not seeing a ton of panic really among anybody. Um, of course, we had some events go down in Kazakhstan that potentially had an impact on an already affected market. Uh, if you guys don't know, the Kazakhstani government is going through a ton of turmoil right now, and they were responsible for, I think it was like 14 or 18% of the hash rate of Bitcoin. A lot of the miners that were in China actually left China after uh, the mining was banned there and moved to Kazakhstan. And uh, unfortunately, the primary internet service provider in Kazakhstan shut down the internet, literally shut off the internet, and uh, the hash rate of Bitcoin dropped uh, significantly as a result. Um, and yet we just celebrated Bitcoin's birthday just a couple of days ago, four days ago now, uh, on January 3rd. 13 years this amazing technology has been in our hands. The Genesis block, again, was 13 years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, it's amazing to see where, where it has gone. I know that we see this $40,000 price point of Bitcoin as a, as a dump or as a dip. But if you think about it, it's actually up like tens of thousands of percent from that 13 year, uh, 13 years ago, first Genesis block. Uh, it's at a trillion dollar market cap now. And uh, the, the whole market overall is two trillion. We as uh, as humans who decided together um, to, to build something created a two trillion dollar market on our own without any intermediaries. That is amazing. So um, obviously, one of the biggest opportunities that has been opened up in recent history is investing in crypto, building crypto businesses. And, uh, you know, lots of people have made a name for themselves, uh, including including Divi. So we're really excited um, about about where we're going as a company and where the industry has gone and continues to go. So uh, that's a crypto market update. We'll jump into the numbers. I know you guys have been act actively asking about, uh, you know, how many downloads has the wallet received? Did La Liga have an impact, the first game and all that stuff? Um, yes, we have seen 10,000 active users in the wallet. It's a ma major increase. I think we have 18,000 total downloads now. So we're, we are seeing an uptick. We haven't seen a huge uptick in the La Liga regions yet. But, you know, we just saw our very first game which is a perfect segue into the announcements section of this Live at Five. Um, so yeah, you may have seen, and uh, I think we can pin, I've never done this before, the, uh, the, the tweet. Ryan, are you able to do the pinning? I, I can try to figure it out if not, but um, basically- yeah, I don't okay, think I I'll, can. I'll try to figure it out in a second. The first game uh, appeared on uh, January 2nd, across a bunch of different regions and it was on uh, one of the largest sports broadcasting um, networks in the Middle East. Very, very big deal. More than a billion viewers uh, watch that channel every single game. Um, so we're really, really excited to know that so many eyes were on our logo for the first time. Some of them, um, some maybe have heard of Divi before and we're going to continue to do that for the next three and a half years. It's just going to keep appearing on the sides of the of the pitch uh, next to the goal. Of course, there will be TV ads. We will have um, influencer marketing, social media through La Liga, uh, their various channels, activations in person. You guys know the whole deal, and you can find more about the partnership on our website, thebewallet.com. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's obviously a very exciting moment. A lot of my friends and, of course, the community were all hitting us up saying, oh, my God, it's like it's happening. It's real. We said it would start in January. And guess what? It started in January. So we are excited to be moving forward into 2022. 
Um, I think we're going to see a surge of new supporters for the brand um, through this partnership and, of course, other partnerships that we forge throughout uh, the, the coming year. Um, with that, I guess we can kind of move into Ryan's section. Um, we've definitely grown the foundation marketing side of things. Our Giphy channel is growing insanely, which is crazy. Uh, so, Ryan, take it over. Yeah, I, I uh, I'm excited to be here, and uh, I guess the Giphy or the Jiffy, however you pronounce it, uh, channel has has been blowing up. We have over 25 million views, which is huge. And then I, I think it's growing in popularity because one of the the most recent gifts that uh, was put out got uh, like mil two or three million views on the first day after it's been posting. So that's just a big thank you to the community and as part of that we want to encourage everybody to continue to uh, subscribe to the the divi project on giphy and use those gifts uh put them on your post you know get get the visibility out on twitter and you know di di additional social platforms that you're sharing this stuff um so that's that was the the giphy so make sure to subscribe to them. Um, I think there's also a, a big push to get everybody, if you haven't already, to watch the, the 2021 recap video. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of things, obviously. The wallet, La Liga, staking vaults, uh, just a lot of excitement that happened in the past year in 2021. And we, we put everything into the video and you can get it on YouTube. I'm not sure if I'm sure we can shoot out the link to that somehow, but uh, make sure you're, you're, you're up to speed because 2021 was awesome and we recapped it, but we're even more excited about what's coming ahead for 2022. Um, and then I guess next up, we wanted to take a, an opportunity to basically highlight the community, both, everybody in here who's listening, you know, being a part of uh, supporting the project, but also supporting some of the efforts um, down in, you know, Venezuela, um, there, Ramos and his, his team, Ramos is kind of the, the figurehead, but uh, he, he networks and, and does a lot of different things in the Venezuelan community to help out, you know, people less fortunate and, has done an amazing job with that. And that's what we want you guys to continue to support him and continue being awesome. Obviously. Um, one other example, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but the, uh, the spaghetti dinner is something that I think it, I want to say it's like the fifth year in a row, but uh, Tristan Pilato, if, if I pronounce it right, I think that's right. But he puts on a spaghetti. Go ahead. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but he, he's putting together, again, another opportunity, another venture for the community to help out the local communities that might not necessarily be, you know, a bunch of Divi, but they're all learning and they're all becoming part of the, the larger community. So that's awesome. And I think there's, I think that's about it for the community aspect. Just thank you to everybody and keep being awesome i guess i'll <laughs> yeah turn man. it over turn it over the mic now <laughs> yeah the, co the community driven efforts are probably one of my favorite things about this project because it's not something that divi necessarily drives forward uh, we do try to contribute in a variety of ways of course we'll, we'll donate divi we have our you know our one percent of our treasury goes to um, philanthropic causes and things like that um, but yeah, Tristan, we met in the very, very early days of Divi back when it was DivX and the, and the community was actually on Slack. <laughs> um, if you guys have been around a long time, you probably remember Slack communities. Um, but yeah, he's been doing this spaghetti drive and this year he actually gave out, um, PPE stuff. You know, he gave out some hand sanitizer, masks, stuff like that to his community out in the Philippines. Um, it's awesome to see, of course, Ramos is doing the Lord's work every single week, feeding so many people, hundreds of, of uh, adults and children in uh, in his villages in Venezuela. So 
yeah, thank you to the community and, and keep, keep pushing those amazing efforts forward because that's what crypto is for. It's really a, a way to, um, you know, spread wealth and, and redistribute wealth in a, in a very responsible and, and helpful way. So um, awesome stuff. We do have some special guests here on the call today. Um, Chris Irola is our chief product officer. If you're not familiar with him, he was in a video last year where he gave one of the most popular updates uh, of of the year. Actually, we got a lot of positive feedback on his roadmap update. Uh, let's let's give up some hundreds and claps for for Chris. Uh, hop on stage, brother. Thanks, Nick. Hey, everybody. Um, it's been amazing. Like I've, I just came on seven months ago and this has been really a pivotal year for Divi. Um, formal transition into crypto made easy with the launch of our mobile wallet early in the year, went from zero to launch relatively smoothly. Um, and as, as Nick said, we've got 10,000 active users, active downloads, um, which is in my opinion, exponential growth really for a, an early mobile wallet. Um, and it's really based on the community. I mean, that's, that's what it really comes down to. Um, so then we really concentrated on making sure that we had our core IP in the wallet. So we've got our nodes, all the tiers are in there. And then in October, as Nick mentioned, we've got our staking vaults. We got, we finally got them in the wallet. So one of the more highly anticipated releases. Um, so that laid the foundation. That foundation is the core IP. So now we're differentiated in the market already as we're starting and moving into 2022, um, it's just going to expand out. So internationalization was another thing we included in 2021. Uh, we got Spanish language in the wallet. We're soon to get French in, and we're also establishing polls so that we can start to broaden that. Um, we've got it all mapped out, so it's really easy to get new languages in. And the La Liga partnership, which like allowed us to go globally available, as well as um, you know we're going to start you know pushing this out to the world, like we were talking about. We've got we've got vis like eyes on it, billions of eyes on it that we haven't had before. So I mean, 2021 has just been astounding. So 2022. The concept for 2022, the themes for 2022, is expansion of utility, interoperability, and always onboarding and user experience. So keeping the Divi Made Easy concept going, right? We're all we're all just our crypto made easy concept going. We're always looking at that. UX is is always the core tenant in what we do. So as I was talking about a little bit in Q4, um, by Divi in the wallet will be our first push uh, in for a release in 2022 and we're anticipating it coming in q1 at this point so what buy divi in the wallet means is fiat on and off boarding so you can buy divi directly with a credit and debit card you can also connect your bank account um, through a partnership that we have in addition to that we're going to allow for swaps so a conversion of about 270 coins and tokens uh, via the wallet and then erc20 support in the wallet so you can custodialize your ERC-20 tokens in the Divi wallet uh, with this interoperability and utility added to the wallet as we move forward. And that's just the first release. So now looking at it from a slightly different perspective, we're looking at putting in multi-sig. And that's going to start in the desktop. Uh, and then it'll soon become part of the mobile wallet as well. But if you're not familiar with multi-sig, basically what that allows you to do is you and a trusted partner or partners um, can co-sign on transactions or are required to co-sign for a transaction to take place. So um, again, desktop wallet first, mobile wallet soon after. And this is going you know, to expand utility, security, and peace of mind for those folks that are a little bit concerned about keeping you know, all of their massive bags in their wallet on the mobile device anyway. Um, so... Multi-sigs next after that. And then this is this is really surrounding, you know, like I'm encompassing kind of the Q2, up to Q2 look here. I'm not really going all the way into 2022 because the La Liga partnership is really going to be influencing our roadmap in a positive way as well. There's not only La Liga with like, you know, some skins and some designs and some, you know, some integrations that we can make, you know, ha happen with La Liga itself, but also with the other co-sponsors. So there are a, quite a few partners out there that are heavy hitters that we now have access to and want to collaborate with very deeply. So keep your eye out for these contribution and collaboration elements there um, and how it'll influence our roadmap. We're, we're really pushing forward in a really positive way with this. Um, another one is new coins. So we wanna support additional coins, additional partnerships, additional companies like ourselves. Um, and you voted and we listened, Casper, you're next. Like we're, 
we're already talking. We've got some things going. It's it's beginning. Um, we got to schedule it in, but we'll get, we'll get there. Um, Casper is going to be the first coin that we're going to put in, and then bridges. And I know that Josh is coming up next. And he's going to expand on this in quite a bit. But we're going to start with an ETH bridge. It's actively under development right now, um, which basically opens up to the world of DeFi. So expansion of utility, interoperability, um, and then from there it'll be more and more chains. So we're we're really looking forward to even just the early stages of 2022 with what we're looking at. Um, and we're mapping out H2. So pretty much the story at this point. And I'll that, pass it back to you, Nick. That is, I'm, I'm not, I'm not just saying this, like I already knew what you were going to say and I'm still <laughs> really, really excited. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm super <crazy> excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's awesome to see, you know, we've laid a good foundation. We're able to build, upon that foundation still some obvious features that need to be in there um but then we start to get creative and and we get to be a little bit more flexible about what comes next exactly. um and uh and i think a lot of that flexibility is going to come from a lot of that interoperability that we talked to which is my sort of haphazard segue into bringing josh on stage to talk about what's coming uh from the innovation department thanks nick appreciate the intro um, so just to give everybody a little bit of context on 2021, uh, we started 2021, me specifically, I joined the team back in May. We started with a pretty heavy research phase. Those of you that have been following along on Twitter and following along with all our social channels, you know that we've been looking to bridge to Ethereum for quite some time now. One of the first challenges that we needed to figure out was getting a UTXO coin, which is a layer one, like ourselves, to actually go into a smart contract. Right. And so figuring that out was a really, really difficult challenge, especially because we wanted to do things in the most decentralized way possible. And so we spent a couple of months researching different solutions here and there, uh, trying to do certain tests on whether we could create zero knowledge and partnerships. Um, and some of you remember, we tried doing different partnerships for the bridging. But in the end, what we realized is the best solution um, ultimately would have came out from us creating it ourselves, right? And so we spent some time in, in the heavy research phase, really put together a beautiful tech spec of what we felt would be the most viable way forward and would still maintain the greatest amount of decentralization and benefit for the end user, right? So for the community members that wanted to use Divi, we wanna make sure that the incentive and the benefit is still there for them on the other side when they move interoperably. So part of that, and this pertains more to 2022, is having features that allow them to earn similarly to the way they would on the layer one, right? And so as everyone's familiar, you can stake your Divi, you can deploy a master node, right? And that's probably everyone's favorite feature about Divi is the fact that you can make a really nice passive income on it, but that's a little bit more challenging on the layer two. And so trying to figure out that problem is a very fun challenge, right? And so we wanted to make sure that we rooted everything that we did within very sound economics, that we always did one-to-one -one pegs, right? And that any of the token supply that existed on an EVM network like Ethereum was backed by a token or by a coin on the layer one side. So, you know, a lot of folks ask, oh, well, you know, why is it, why is it taking this long? And it's like, well, you know, it's really important that we do things the right way right? And that we do it with conviction and really sound fundamentals rather than speed through the process, you know, and take shortcuts. So because of that heavy research that we did, we are now about halfway through the development of the smart contract for the EW token. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this on here, but we are right now targeting January 15th for the completion of that smart contract. Um, Despite that, we still have to go through an independent security audit. We would likely be using Certic for that. Um, we're still going to figure out how we can create some kind of a honeypot test, um, some bounties to see if you know folks out in the community would like to try and break it. Um, but we want to make sure that we do a lot of testing on it before we release it to the public. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be ready in January 15th. The finished product is going to be ready. Uh, we're just going to spend a good amount of time testing it just to make sure that it's safe, that it's secure, and that it puts people's, um, you know, security first. So that's really exciting. And then beyond that, the next thing that we've been working on in terms of research is the DeFi protocols. Not sure how familiar everyone is with DeFi, 
For those who are, um, you might be familiar with automated market making mechanisms like Uniswap and SushiSwap and PancakeSwap and you know, the traditional staking pools and farms, right? So we've evaluated some of those opportunities and really started to architect how we can bring some of that same incentive that you have in the layer one to the layer two while maintaining really sound economics across the chains. Um, and I think that we've done a really good job of architecting a solution that's going to accomplish that. And then beyond that, we've also begun looking at a partnership to bring Divi into a DeFi 2.0 context, right? And for those of you who, again, might not necessarily be familiar with Divi, uh, DeFi, uh, DeFi 2.0 refers to the DAOs, DAOs that hold their own liquidity within their own treasury. So for instance, you can think about Olympus Protocol or Wonderland or Foam, um, these different protocols that actually take an over collateralized position within their treasury in order to mint a supply of a currency. Usually what stands out to most folks with those are that the APYs are incredibly high, right? And so this adds a fun new element for a very different segment of the market. I realize that some folks really prefer to just kind of set their money and forget it, right? And I do a lot of that myself. I really don't like to worry about it that much. But for those who want to be more active in the management of their money and really want to go ahead and try and execute whatever uh, opportunities they find within an inefficient market, this is going to be something that really caters to those folks, right? Um, Divi has made a product and a project that is so incredibly easy to use. Um, we're trying to bring that same mission into the DeFi world, right? If you're familiar with DeFi, I... I'm, I'm incredibly entrenched in DeFi right now, and I still think it's very complicated. We want to take those elements that we've brought in terms of the ease of use and the accessibility that we've uh, pretty much instilled into our existing products and take that and put it into DeFi and then take those features and then put them within our core product. And so this quarter uh, specifically is going to be a lot of myself working with Chris, making sure that everything that we do is very product focused too, right? Expanding the utility to coin is just for the coin sake that we're doing it in a way that is user friendly and that fits well within the product that we have, you know, that we want to celebrate with this partnership. So that's a little bit about uh, this this past year while we're aiming for Q2. Um, there's still some pretty exciting partnerships on the horizon. I'm not sure if we're really at the point where we can announce them, but um, we should be getting across the finish line on some pretty big stuff here pretty soon. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on. It's surreal. I hate to repeat what everyone else is saying, but it's been a super exciting year so far. Um, and I'm super pumped about 2022. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you, Josh. Um, Josh Caleb, our chief innovation officer definitely has taught me a lot. I can say in the past, uh, you know, how long you been here? Eight months, nine months now. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, had a cursory understanding of DeFi and its opportunities. I feel like I have a very, very still cursory understanding, but much more significant now, you know, actually playing around with it and feeling more comfortable with it. Um, but you're right. There's a lot of improvements that can be made and that's kind of what we've done best over the, over the course of time. And I'm excited to see what, where we can take uh, DeFi next and how it will impact our overall ecosystem. I, I think, you know, anyone listening that, to this, um, and our and our community at large, they can start to see how you know we always adhere to the philosophy of making it accessible to everyone everywhere, um, making it as easy as possible. But we also want to ensure that we are attracting uh, a broader market, um, as well as uh, you know the niches that exist. These various sectors start to pop up in crypto now, right? And it's hard to follow all of the various threads. You have NFTs, you have DeFi, you have still the old staking mechanisms, DPoS, you know, there's a million things every single day, it's changing. Um, so ensuring that we have a strategic approach to, to all of these things, um, of course, adhering to, to Jeff's Divi Everywhere philosophy is paramount, I believe, to the success of, of Divi and, and all coins in 2022, um, especially when it comes to interoperability. We're starting to see that layer ones are settlement layers, right? That's, that's become the narrative and the truth in, in practice. Um, and, and these various layer twos and side chains and bridges are becoming the way that will act, ultimately, I believe, interact with, with blockchain in the, in the future, at least in the near future. Um, so yeah, thanks again, Josh. That was, that was awesome. We have some time here to, uh, to jump into an AMA 
And before we do that, and uh, I just ask that you guys, you know, raise your hand if you want to speak. I want to just give a shout out to some of the people that joined this. It's a space. It's not a podcast, but it kind of is. Uh, Maddie Satz, I was just on your show yesterday, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to the show. The Voice is our amazing support lead. Um, Chief, I forget what he calls himself, Chief Evangelist. (laughs) Uh, Captain Nemo Ramos, always leading the community. Uh, Zach, thanks for joining us. Russ, we're praying for you. I know you're sick. Your family's sick. Uh, You know, our prayers are out there for you. Tyler, our amazing GIF generator. Uh, Aaron, Sneaky Pete, Grant, I mean... Uh, everybody seems to have joined up today. Divi Daddy's out here. This is so cool. I don't usually get to see everybody who's joined us. So thanks to everybody. If I missed you, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, awesome, awesome turnout tonight. So without further ado, let's jump into the AMA. I think we have uh, Lethro, Lenti. We will add you a speaker. What's up, man? How are you? Oh, you're on mute, buddy. No, this is your time to shine. Hey, is this for me? Hey, yes, sir. Hey, it's all you. Buddy. Hey, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hey, uh, hey, Nick. Hey, I love Divi, man. Just want to say you've been grinding for quite a while, and kudos to you and and your team uh, for how far you've taken Divi. Uh, I've been um, I've been with Divi for about a year and a half, and and not really full time community contributor but just uh watching from afar and uh participating in other ecosystems um but one question i had maybe is for uh chris or joshua uh in, in regards to DeFi. are you guys looking at something about the possibility of maybe having some type of liquid staking uh where um you know y- your your master node you can maybe uh borrow against it or, or uh uh, leverage it for uh, other utility? Is that something that you guys are considering or in the works? And then my second question is, uh, is there any thought of any stable coins uh, becoming a part of the Divi ecosystem just because it's worldwide and, and, and stable coins seems to be the, uh, the movement as far as uh, what, uh, how transaction or transactions are going to happen uh, on blockchain? Absolutely. Great questions. Josh, you want to take the liquid staking question? Yeah. Yeah. Happy to address that. First off, thanks for the question. Um, To address the liquid staking, one of the reasons that we wanted to move into a bridge and get over the EVM chain is because in order for us to have those kinds of smart contracts where you can actually pull liquidity from a position that's locked up um, is because uh, we can't currently do that on the UTXO blockchain. Right. One of the great things about our existing blockchain is that it uses minimal computation. It's really simple math. It's pretty much indestructible, but it doesn't have the account-based model that would let us basically pull from a staking position. And so moving into Ethereum, one of the things that we wanted to do is first approach the major players like Aave and Compound, right? Because that's obviously the lowest hanging fruit for us to establish those partnerships and give lending opportunities to the people who have Divi collateral. If it doesn't, it is a priority on our list where we are going to want to add that feature. And if we can't necessarily get that in a very expeditious way through these partnerships, we're going to go ahead and just build that ourselves. Um, as you might be familiar with, like whenever you do a loan within the DeFi space, it's always over collateralized, right? So you can take out a fairly significant amount of loan of value, right, of liquidity from your collateral. Um, And so we're going to talk to Ave and Compound. We've already begun, uh, well, myself, I've already begun reaching out to their teams to see if we can try and get an integration going as soon as we get across the bridge. Um, Otherwise, um, I'll have to get back to you and see, but it is part of the plan. It is. And I'm not sure if we'd call it staking, but yeah, it's essentially a, an over collateralized position if that answers your question. And then as, uh, regarding the stable coins, um, we haven't really explored too much about doing a stable coin on the existing blockchain. If we were to do it, and this is a conversation that we've, we've had extensively and we've been deliberating about this for some time, if we do create a stable coin within our ecosystem, um, one of the things that I would prefer to see, and this is just me speaking on behalf of myself, is the same model as Terra Luna right? If you're familiar with 
the different ways that stable coins are accomplished. You have the algorithmic ones like DAI. You have the ones that are collateralized like Tether. <clears throat> Terra, on the other hand, is accomplished because of exchange rate. So Terra USD is actually backed by the dollar because in order to create UST, you have to burn Luna at, a, at, at that price rate, right? If you've got, let's say for instance, Luna is worth a hundred bucks, you burn the Luna that you have, you get a hundred UST. And so rather than having this treasury, right, with reserves that back the value, it's backed by that constant exchange rate back and forth. Um, and that's really the method that I would prefer to see just given the legal sort of um, regulation that I see coming down the pipe for players like Tether. Um, but if we did it, it would either have to be on a side chain that we create, which is something we're exploring right now with our blockchain lead, or if we built a new core entirely, we would consider it then. But for the meantime, it's it's a good ways away on the roadmap. That answers yeah. your question. Great answer. Yeah, I think uh, stablecoin is something that we, we bring up a lot in our like internal conversations as well, when we're especially when we're talking about DeFi 2.0, these sort of... Um, uh, symbiotic DAO structures and like Ohm and, and DGen box and, and, and Temple and Frax, uh, token Mac and all that stuff that's been coming out. Um, there's some really interesting case studies now. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what takes hold. You know, we've, we've always kind of taken the approach of like, okay, let's see what works really well and then divify it, <laughs> if you will. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely something there. Um, but yeah, as, as Josh said, maybe not in the immediate future. Um, okay. So thanks for the, thanks for the question. We got uh, Russian bot AI. I love that username every single time I see it. I'm bringing you up on stage, man. Oh, hello. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, um, I got a, a bunch of questions actually, but I'll just stick to um, the telecom deal for now. Um, it's not clear to me um, exactly how it's going to work yet. I think it's probably just because you guys haven't uh, given us the details yet. But um, when people get their phones from this company, uh, who's going to own the Divi, the company or the customer? You know, how much will it? Um, how much will be on there? And um, did the telecom company already buy the Divi, or have they yet to buy it? Uh, great question, man. So yeah, this is how it will work, at least from my understanding. And we're we're still early on with this with this partnership. Uh, to give you guys some context, the telecom deal is not something that we turn around tomorrow. It's online. Like this is uh, the first phase of it takes about a half a year. Um, the next phase takes almost two years. And there's also governmental, you know, things in the way and, and regulations and things that we have to deal with. Um, not we, but the the company that we're working with. So. Um, you know, don't necessarily expect the impact of this other than speculative to be immediate, um, although it will be broad reaching when it when it occurs, um, just to give that just to lay that on the ground. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, the the phones will come loaded with a wallet that has a certain amount of, of coins on it. Um, as far as how much it's still being programmed out, um, still being laid out in the program, I should say. Um, the company has not purchased any Divi yet. Um, of course they will. And, um, I'm sorry. The third question you asked was, uh, it remind me. Um, I need to think about it myself. Okay. So <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it was who, who owns the Divi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, who owns the Divi? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we have talked to them about both structures, um, uh, because they'll be white labeling the wallet. It won't be, you know, Divi wallet necessarily. Um, they could through some of their other partnerships perform a custody of, of those funds, um that's not really up to us or something that will contribute well will contribute to the decision maybe to an extent um but you know we're not building this for them we're licensing the technology to them um so we're just basically advising the project from a high level another company is actually doing the system integration so yeah well can the customer sell the divi or they that's not an option of course, of course. yeah yeah so they ideally what they want the customer to do is use the divi to pay for their services um but if they so choose yeah they could of course um sell it or or put the rewards on the market what have you instead of using okay. them to, to purchase yeah so, but so be, it, it couldn't be too much divvy on the phone though because otherwise they're just giving the customers too much free money 
right? It's not it's not much because we're talking about developing yeah. nations where, you know, a, a little goes a long way. Okay. Thank yeah. you. My pleasure. All right, we got JT Thornton hopping on stage. What's that up, Justin? JT? Oh, is it Justin? It's Justin. Yeah, Nick, it's Justin. <laughs> Justin, you're uh you're muted if you want to if you want to chat. Now's your time to shine. Give him another second. Can you hear me now? You can do it. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, sorry about that. Right. How are you guys doing? Good. How you doing? Doing amazing. Doing amazing. Great. All right. So I got a quick question um, regarding going back to the La Liga partnership. Uh, you know, what are your? I guess the, I've heard terms like the big, hairy, audacious goal, short-term goal, uh, one-year goal. What? You know, I've, I've very curious how you're going to ultimately implement this where we have a mass adoption. Obviously, you have you know the logo, Diddy Wallet going around the. Um, out the around the stadium and whatnot but like you know something like what you talked about with the telecom deal like where people are actually downloading it like say all right you buy a ticket you get five euros worth of divi that goes to your that's attached to your ticket so that way people are actually using it because it has more utility at the stadiums is there like are there plans for that and what are some of your short-term long-term girl goals uh with with that as it pertains to la liga great question man yeah i think the biggest deal uh the biggest part of this deal is the actual activations, the ability for us to go out there and be in person in the stadiums, whether the, whether I'm actually in the stadium or not, Divi is in the stadium, right? Whether that means purchasing a beer with Divi, purchasing a ticket with Divi, doing an entire hospitality uh, deal, you know, maybe, um, you know, a hotel uh, becomes a Divi hotel for, for a weekend or something for a big game. Um, we'll also be at, at most of the large events, like El Clasico is one of the biggest events of the year. Um, it's kind of like a, a pro bowl uh, to my understanding of, of, of soccer. So, um, you know, we'll have activations going on there. That is our opportunity. And you probably have seen it at the FTX stadium in, in, uh, in Florida, right. Where they yeah. give out, you know, they'll airdrop some NFTs or they'll airdrop some Bitcoin or whatever it is to get you to open the app, download it, use it and learn what it is. Those right. things are all part of the a partnership. That's a big reason they wanted to go with a company like ours over uh, one of the larger ones because we actually have the the hunger and the, and the drive to to want to do those more unique activations. Right. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah, it's definitely much wider reaching than just you know the logo everywhere. That's part of it, but it's all these different touch points, right? Like it takes a while to like ingrain your brand into someone's mind. Um, so, you know, you see it while you're watching the game and then maybe you go online and you see uh, your favorite influencer talking about it or your favorite players is talking about it. Um, and then you see an ad, you know, it, it just builds and builds and it becomes right. sort of this. Uh, yeah. So um, we're, we're excited to, to, to get into the activation. Aspect right. And are you trying here. to activate this season or are you kind of like test piling coming up with ideas now and then when the next season starts, is that when you really want to implement it? Yeah, I think the season is almost over and it picks back up again. Chris, you probably know better than me, but April, if I'm not mistaken. No. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, yeah, so it will more so be activations next season, um, but cool. we're not we're not far out from that. Awesome. Cool. Good info. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> Definitely, man. Thanks for jumping up. All right. We got Grant. Actually, I'm sorry, Grant. I think Michael requested before you, so I'm going to bring him up and then I'll bring you up. Michael, how, how are you? Doing well. Um, thanks, team, for putting this together. Uh, I just wanted to clarify for myself and the question earlier on the stable coins. Um, it's my understanding that we'll have Tether in the wallet in order to make the swaps work. Um, yeah, so we're, we're likely to offer both, um, although we're more leaning toward USDC for a variety of reasons. Um, but yeah, it, it, that is basically the way it works to ensure that the coins are cus self custodied for the longest period of time. You basically swap into Tether, you hold the Tether, and then it, it swaps into into Divi for you. Um, you don't really see this happen necessarily. Um, it just kind of happens, and it's it's relatively fast. We're trying to make it as fast as possible. Um, but yeah, it will. You will have the ability to hold stable coins, of course, in in the Divi wallet as well. Um, outside of just the functionality of, of swaps and, and onboarding. Great, thanks. My pleasure. 
Thanks for thanks for the question. Grant, you've been around forever. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. As soon as you connect. <laughs> we gotta have some like waiting music in between the uh the granting of speakerhood so and the actual connection. Music. Yeah, a little yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Well. Do, 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 do. There you go. <laughs> Grant Grant's one of the uh the, the clubhouse OGs. So he he's been uh part of the 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 vocal uh Divi community for, for a long time. That's right. Yeah, he's he's been around. He's actually shadow banned on Twitter, which is really a shame because he says some cool stuff. But uh, you know, it is what it is. We, I guess we lost Grant. Papa Joe is in the house. Russ, I saw that you had your hand raised, but maybe you don't want to say anything anymore. I know you're you're not feeling tip-top shape at the moment. If you want to come up, you're more than welcome to. Um, if we don't have any other questions or if Grant can't get back here, you know, we can call it uh, a night. I can let everyone get on with their Friday nights. The first Friday of 2022. Oh, we do have Russ. My man. Here we go. Mike is off. There we go. Mike is unmuted. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm under the go. weather again. Hopefully, it's not COVID again. Uh, it's just a cold. Uh, but we'll find out tomorrow when we get the test results. Um, just to follow up on one of the questions asked about the uh, um, the, the season, uh, the the Liga partnership or, or, or sponsorship deal basically is for three full seasons, and then we uh, opted into uh, with a special deal from uh, basically December until July when uh, the the new budget, the new activation budget starts for the next year, the next season. Uh, so during this period of time, uh, Zoe and her incredible marketing team and the program management that's getting into uh, put in place, working very closely with the uh, La Liga folks in Dubai and her, her folks there will be working to build that program out so that we can take advantage of the season when it starts. So between now and the start of the new season, you'll see a lot of things happen. Uh, but then when that season kicks off, you're going to see the big full program uh, get kicked into place. Um, the question that I had and is for Josh, uh, don't know if you want to talk about um, potential OTC um, up, um, functionality or structure that may be coming down the pipeline, or too premature to talk about that? No, I think we can. Um, one of the exciting things that we worked on um, tangentially to to the bridge solution and, and really to help the market a little bit. And I'll, I'll give you guys some color on it. Not, not a lot of folks like to speak on price and, and market effect, but um, it's a reality. So I'll go into it a little bit. A lot of you might understand that Divi as a coin um, has been such an effective monetary payment vehicle that a lot of folks actually transact it between each other, right? They give it to each other wallet to wallet, right? And so part of that is, uh, part of that result is that a lot of the volume, a lot of the trade volume that actually takes place within the Divi ecosystem isn't necessarily reflected within the exchange, right? So when people are trading the coin over the counter between each other, like let's say for instance, I give somebody Tether and they give me Divi, you're not going to see that reflected on coin market cap and you're not going to see it reflected on KuCoin, right? And so that oftentimes gives the appearance that there's not a lot of trade volume when in fact, I know for a fact that there's millions of dollars in trade volume on a daily basis that's happening between individuals. And so one of the things that we worked on to try and help reflect that is creating an OTC desk, right? that could help sort of reflect that volume through the market through either a market making bot that would source that from the market or um, a coordinated buy between two parties, right? And so one of the things that we worked on was with our partner Viva Capital. Um, they've been phenomenal and they offer a lot of different services for people who want to roll over their IRA, 
who basically want to move away from the traditional financial system and move towards crypto. They offer a lot of those really concierge service products. Um, but one of the things they also do really well is they work with us when it comes to buying large orders of Divi, right? Some of you may know that when you go on KuCoin, it can be a little bit tough if you want to get more than a couple thousand dollars with the Divi, right? And so working with Viva, um, let's say Viva has a client is looking to buy or purchase a certain amount. They will work with us to coordinate that through the market or through a bot that can actually source it um, and, and really get the most out of the liquidity that we have there so that two things happen. The buyer who's looking to buy their Divi can get their Divi at the best possible execution price. And then two, the market is actually showing that trade volume, right? And liquidity works both ways. I mean, by them placing that order, they're actually adding greater liquidity to the market too. So um that's uh you know that's that's one of the things that we've done is work with viva um and establish an otc desk with them it's also helps from a regulatory standpoint just because they're accredited when it comes to all those things um, but we haven't really started promoting it yet because one of the things that we want to roll out is staking right um their clients viva clients like to stake their divi and one of the cool things about viva is that they use institutional grade custody or some of you might know it as multi-party computation custody or MPC um, to make sure that, you know, God forbid you lost your, your seed phrase, which you should always hang on to. They actually have a backup in place for you. Uh, and so having that institutional grade custody is great um, if that's what works better for you. Um, but the challenge of that is then how do you stake it, right? As a lot of you know, you need a stake within your wallet. Well, thankfully, Divi has a solution for this through the staking vaults. And so we have a third key that allows somebody else to host your staking without any custodial implications. And so even if, let's say, nobody has the private key, as such is the case in, in uh, institutional grade custody, you can still stake and earn from your Divi. We're actually finishing up that tech right now, and that's why I haven't really made a big splash about it yet. Um, that's why Russ said I probably shouldn't be talking about it yet, but oh well, it's an AMA. You can ask me anything. So <laughs> that's, you know, uh, we'll be honest on here. So that's one of the things that we've been working on um, because like my parents, for instance, you know, they're they're like almost in their 80s now. Um, they they can't keep hold of a, of a private key, right? And they want to make a passive return on their Divi. Um, and, and, you know, they can't possibly manage doing it by themselves. So Viva Capital, which is a, a really kind of great concierge service sort of hedge fund, if we can call them that, um, has, a, has an offering that's, that's really great for that. But more importantly, they've worked with us so that a lot of the volume, and you guys may have noticed this, um, you may have seen this on the chart on CoinMarketCap. There was one point, I think this was before we went to Spain for La Liga, you saw, or maybe it was before Dubai, Nick. It was before Dubai. Well, you saw a pretty significant uptick in volume, mm -hmm. right? Part of that was a result of these partnerships that we've done um, to really create a healthier market because people go, oh, there's not enough liquidity on the market. Well, now we're driving a lot of the volume toward the market so you guys can see it there. And so that other traders or prospective Divi holders can go to Coin Market Cap and say, hey, what's Divi? And they go and they're like, oh, wait, there's actually a lot of volume there. So, um, we, we want optics to look good. We want a good presentation and, and Viva has helped with that. So. Awesome. All right. I have a question if no one Russian else. Russian bot. Go for it, right. man. Um, so I, I know that, um, you know, bringing exposure to like millions of people will naturally increase the Divi price. But I was wondering, besides exposure, do you guys have anything planned that, um, you know, um, makes the price go kind of like Ethereum, for example. They have a business model where people need to buy Ethereum for gas, and that makes the price go up. Is there anything similar to that or any other kind of mechanism that people will have to buy Divi to do something to make price go up? Or is it? are we banking on, like, exposure and stuff like that? I think that's a good question for Chris um, to, to expand yeah. on the utility that we're building into the wallet. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it, it's the perfect question, really, because, you know, La Liga is going to give us a ton of exposure. But realistically, 
that partnership also gives us a lot of um, relationship building opportunities with the other co-sponsors. It allows us to to watch the market and get more kind of deep information about what these like Goliaths in the market are doing right now and what's succeeding and what's failing and what may be you know room for growth really. So to answer your question a little bit more succinctly, um, the the concept of bridging the concept of interoperability will allow us to start to introduce things like the platform concept. <clears throat> so with that, we can start to expand out and potentially even create an ecosystem that requires Divi to make a transaction happen. Right. So we've got, we've got opportunities that I think will expand out. Um, we haven't decided in any one direction or the other, but it's always on the back of our mind. It's like, you know, it's not just transaction revenue. It's not just, you know, recurring revenue through um, partnerships or listings or bridges, but it's also, you know, what do we look at from a, an interoperability plus utility perspective? So I can't really say, you know, yes or no about whether or not we'll get there, but it's always in the back of my mind. Okay. And a uh, follow-up question. Um, Exposure is not enough. Have you guys uh, considered, um, like, outsourcing your cash on wrap to other coins? That's an interesting question. Um, well, so we, Oh, go ahead, Josh. Yes, um, I, I just want some clarity on the question. When you say outsourcing the cash on ramp, the fiat on ramp, are you referring to having Divi buyers buy another coin first? That's easier to access and then trading it for Divi. Is that what you're referring to? Not exactly. I, I'm thinking like, um, let's say another coin has a problem that, oh, they're not on any big exchanges or anything. It's hard to buy. They come to Divi for a solution. Hey, can we use, you know, somehow use you and it benefits Divi or something. Like maybe they pay you guys in Divi to like <laughs> make it easy for them, their customers to get a ca cash on that. Got something it. Like I got Oh, so we wouldn't be outsourcing. We would be providing a solution to an external party, right? to somebody who needs the solution that we yeah. already have, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I think Chris is probably the best one, or Nick, if you guys want to answer that. I was just curious what the question was. Mm -hmm. with, with the ability to, to offer the swapping functionality between the different ERC-20 tokens or other Layer 1 tokens, any, any coin that we uh, are able to list in the wallet that can be now self-custodied then could also potentially be swapped so having a uh, relationship with the financial institution that we are in the process of setting up that will allow the fiat on ramp to come in, uh, they are on Fireblocks and any coin that can be purchased on Fireblocks can also be acquired. And if we list it in the wallet, then they can hold it in the wallet. So absolutely, we can list coins that need a fiat solution and or a hosting self-custody wallet solution. Okay, I, I would... It gives me an idea. I'd recommend like maybe making a Divi plugin for other websites so they could advertise it to their customers. Like, oh, you want to buy this with cash? Here's how to do it. And they go to the Divi plugin. I think that'd be awesome. Right. I think there's another there's another angle to this, and I'm probably giving up too much here because this is kind of like the, you know, the the pro tip. Um, if they go and buy eDivi, which will be the Ethereum token within our wallet this other party or other project can simply deploy a liquidity pool on the decentralized exchange like Uniswap or Sushi. And then they have a perfect on-ramp, right? They buy our coin, they buy eDivi, which drives up our price, which I'll say shamelessly. Um, and then all they have to do is go trade it and swap it on MetaMask if they want, right? Super simple. That works too. Um, yeah. wh when is um, the Binance bridge coming after Ethereum? I, I assume it's not too long after Ethereum? Yeah, so one of the reasons we targeted Ethereum first is because, one, well, it's probably the most bomb-proof layer one. Um, there are some issues with Solana and AVAX recently, but the, the point of going to Ethereum first is that it's the premier EVM chain, right? That's where the Ethereum virtual machine really lives. And so for us to reach that network as a landing point, to then bridge to other chains is super easy, right? The development lift to create the first bridge is, is kind of difficult, 
and that's evidenced by the time it's taken us. But building the second one to an EVM chain is pretty simple. And we actually, and again, I feel like I'm giving up so much nitty gritty stuff that I'm not even supposed to be announcing yet, but um, we have a solution in place so that we can become immediately interoperable with all the EVM chains once we're on EVE. But it'll it'll be awesome. some time after the security audit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's all my questions for right now that I can think of. I encourage some other people to ask questions. I think they're being shy. <laughs> well, we appreciate it, man. I think, uh, okay, so we'll take one or two more questions here. We're almost at the end of the hour. So uh, we have Christina Smith coming up on stage. Uh, by the way, Russian bot AI, I'm not sure what your real name is. Great, great question. So thank you Sound, for that. Sound death monkey. That's how you know. Oh, oh what's up, man? Yeah, good, <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, Christina, it's your it's your floor. Hey guys, thank you very much. Super excited about Divi. I really like getting to make new master nodes, so I'm working on my third one. <laughs> I got to keep going. So, Congrats. my question for you, and I thought at one point that I had seen something via the website or somewhere else about having like a Divi debit card itself with a Visa Mastercard logo, and being able to use the Divi, you know, coin to actually purchase or pay that bill? Or is that something that was ever in the works or will it be in the works? That's it. Yeah, we're, we are still considering partnerships in that arena. So it's been a, it's been a moving target, honestly. Um, it's been something that we've been talking to a lot of other folks about. We've been talking to um, our, a lot of their, our third party, like, on an off-ramp provider score and we haven't locked in on an actual partner yet we're close like russ and i have been doing some work um with some folks in mostly europe and uk at this point um, but there's also the opportunity for a u.s uh, partnership so it's absolutely still on the roadmap it's just it's a little bit more nebulous than some of the other items that we have so yeah okay. we we talk we talk to uh uh, so we have a U.S. financial institution partnership that um, Chris has been working with to do the integration. And we just started talking with a, another organization that's out of the U.K. that serves uh, some folks that um, can't get access to the U.S. markets for whatever reason, regulatory or otherwise. And both of these in, uh, partners offer uh, the debit card solution. And so we're, we just have to evaluate what's the right one, or maybe it's both. Um, but there is an opportunity to have uh, VIP level cards with your favorite La Liga team or <laughs> and Diva logo. And so, yes, that's coming. It's just the, the right time and the priority of, of resources dedicated to get make that happen. Awesome. Well, just so you know, I vote for, to have one. It's like, please, that would be great. <laughs> Just get my two cents in there, wherever Absolutely. it is in the timeline. Fine by me, just as long as it gets there some point. 100%. You are, you, are you based in North America? Yes. Okay. Washington State. Good enough. Nice For one. now. <laughs> For now. <laughs> as we all are. <laughs> Anybody out there that has a U-Haul or is a moving company, let me know. I'll pay you in day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay. Now, I know uh, I said one more, but we have had big, big league Bitcoin kind of sitting here waiting for a little bit. So I'm just going to take this very last question. Um, and, Christine, I appreciate your question. It's definitely something that has to be taken delicately, as, as the team said. So, um, But it is, it is coming. All right, big league, what you got for us? What's up, guys? Hey, man, I am pumped up. You guys are actually just – kicking ass and i am pumped to be part of this project thank you man i'm, I'm pumped that you're part of it. awesome hey uh just two quick questions one on the mochi on the master note setup on the the patent you have on that just curious if you guys are having any um luck with with uh onboarding other chains and other folks to to that mochi setup and then two talking about patents and everything with the uh, Reggie Middleton and Veritasium, if if you guys have had any conversations or concerns with that. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll address the uh, the mochi thing. Um, yes, we have had several um, masternode coins reach out about it. 
Um, and we also have had some coins reach out about the staking vault thing as well, uh, which is of course not patent pending, but it is pretty unique. Um, you know, a lot of coins have opted to go DPOS route, but, uh, you know, we want to keep staking decentralized. Some coins still have that, that outlook as well. So, um, there is a business case even outside of just, you know, the active income element, uh, to, to masternode or sorry, I should say to Mochi. Um, which is being addressed by, you know, several businesses as well, um, because it's, the patent is really on remote deployment of basically a server, um, that's, that's secured by a private key. So it's, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting patent, um, that, that has a lot for further reaching, um, capabilities than, than just the, the crypto element, but that's maybe it's a discussion for another time. Simple answer is, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of, a lot of interest not even just in the mochi, but just in the wallet in general, people wanted to get listed. Um, a lot of coins don't have an easy wallet or any wallet at all. So, um, there's a huge business case there for us still. Um, as far as their um, I don't think we're at risk there. We, uh, you know, haven't done any DeFi pooling or, or yield farming or anything like that. I know it's, I'm not super familiar with the situation, but I know it has to do with um, basically, what Uniswap does and Sushi Swap and some of the others. Um, so, no, we're not we're not at risk there. Awesome, I appreciate it, guys, and just keep rolling, man. Awesome, yes, you too, man. Thank you for thank you for the question. All right, guys, uh, we are at the end of the hour, actually a little bit over the hour. This has been uh, an amazing session with everyone. I really appreciate everyone coming out, sticking around chatting asking questions and uh and joining the live at five on twitter spaces first live at five of the year today is friday january 7th uh, i can't wait to uh see what this month holds for us and connect back with you guys next month for the next live at five so we're going to change everything this year <laughs> uh, and we're going to start doing the live at five on the first friday of the month so that we get the full month of uh awesome information coming in before we distribute it to everyone uh, but you guys already know you can Always keep up with everything that's going on in real time on our uh, social media channels at Divi Project across all of the various channels. Um, you should definitely check out DiviWallet.com if you haven't already. Download the Divi Wallet. Learn about the foundation on DiviProject.org. Hit us up on Telegram if you have more questions, and I will see you guys next time.